Welcome back to the housing update for July 2023. I'm here with my good friend and lender, Randy Williams from TBF Mortgage. Hello, Randy. Great to see you, Mary. Great to see you. So we just went through June, so we're right in that housing at mid-year. And we have some good news, reality checks, and outlook for the future. And the housing, the good news is housing is normalizing after two unprecedented unicorn years. I mean, what we had in 21 and 22 I don't know if we'll ever again see in our life. Hope not. Yeah, good point. Um, return of seasonality is a welcome sign because let's face it, we are a seasonal market. Winter is our season um, versus up north is different. And prices are rebounding. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Mary, it's time for a reality check. Homeowners have limited options between rate and inventory. Okay, mm -hmm. um, New listings are still steadily declining. Um, I think the affordability still remains the primary challenge. Like It really does. Yeah, it does. Um, not not if 70% of your market is cash, but for anybody that's doing primary, yeah. which 30% of our market is getting a mortgage, you know, it is definitely that. As we look out to the future, new construction is growing, offering more options to buyers and sellers, and expect a moderately active summer season. So that's, you know, July and August. Um, we're seeing uh, that in our area as well. One of the things that I think is interesting is to have buyers that are looking for a home and sellers that want to sell, having that almost balanced or a teeny bit more in one favor or the other is, is a good thing. This is a primary direct result of the rising interest rates. Yeah. When you have such an off balance, way more buyers than the actual inventory will supply, um, you know, it's problems. It's a, it's a rough yeah. market all the way around. So this is more balanced and obviously what we're looking for. Love that. So a little bit of a wonky slide that this goes all the way back to October of 22. But, you know, you can speak to this. Are interest rates normalizing? For those of us that have been in the business for a very long time, these are still insanely great rates. We just had a couple of years of, you know, off years where, you know, for whatever reason, we had those super low rates. But if you look at the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, 2010, we are still lower than all of that right now. Yeah. Historically, we still have very low rates. Yeah. My first one was, I think, 14%. Tells my age. Um, <laughs> go ahead and say what Lawrence Young, the chief economist of NARA, said. Sure. So true. Uh, mortgage rates heavily influence the direction of home sales. It's always going to be that way. Relatively steady rates led, lead to several consecutive months of growth. Which is great, which we, we've really kind of seen that. Um, I love this, and we're going to see it in our area, so make sure you stay tuned or skip forward to that area in this um, video. But existing home sales, the biggest portion across the U.S. are prices that are between 250 and 500, and I think that's kind of interesting. You know, that's that's where the affordability rate is a bit like the interest rate and affordability has sort of leveled off right there in that. that price. It's a sweet, a sweet spot. spot. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And now, what about Lawrence Yun? Uh, again, what is he saying now? Yeah, availability inventory strongly impacts home sales too. So, like existing home sales activity is down sizably due to the current supply being roughly half of the level uh, of 2019. Yeah, so still low inventory. Sure. And the buyers are, you know, let's face it, they kind of got burnt in 21 and 22. Mm -hmm. Multiple offers, they weren't winning, et cetera. So now they're kind of taking their time a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But as supply improves, but remains limited. So go ahead and read what Realtor.com had to say. There were 7.1% more homes for sale in June compared to the same time last year, right? This means that there were 41,000 more homes available to buy on a typical day this past month compared to a year ago. However, to, however, the inventory growth rate for homes actively for sale continued to slow for the fourth month in a row. Yeah. So let's look at this slide right here because, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's funny. I, I get a lot of people asking me that there's a whole bunch of houses out there for sale and this and that. Well, let's look back, and this the far left of this is June or January of 2017. And you can see by month how they went up and then they dropped in May of 21 and May of 22 when they were at their all-time lows. We are above that, but we are certainly not back to 17, 18, 19 numbers. I mean, depending on the price range, like you know this as well as I do, um, people are still having a hard time finding a home. Yeah. You know, in that median range, they still are. So, um, you know, I, I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. I really don't. No. We, we've had inventory problems for the last 10 years, Mary. We really have. 
Yeah, good point. Yeah. Ever been building houses is fast. Mm-hmm. Um, what's Mark Fleming, chief economist, first American saying? History has shown that higher rates may take the steam out of rising prices, but it doesn't cause them to collapse entirely. This is especially true in today's housing market, where the demand for homes continues to outpace the supply, keeping the pressure on housing prices. So true. Demand outpaces supply. You know, for somebody that really, really says that the prices are going to tank and like go back and, you know, get it for half the price. Illusion? Delusion? Completely delusional. (laughs) (laughs) Delusional. The problem is, is we all saw that for us, for those of us of a certain age, we all did see that at one point. Yeah. We think that that's going to happen again, but none of those indicators are there. Right. Then we had so much inventory that that was the problem. Yeah. Completely flipped now. Right. We, have a, we have a whole new wave of buyers that wants to buy, mm-hmm. and the inventory just is not there. I love that. So if we look at home prices rebounding and reflecting on the market dynamic, um, go ahead and, and read to us what Craig Lazara, Managing Director of S&P DJI, said. Yeah, if I were trying to make a case that the decline in home prices that began in June of 2022 had definitely ended in January 2023, April's data, data would bolster my argument. Okay. But if we look at this... And we, let's see if I can get to it and actually look at it. Um, look at the smiley face. It just kind of makes me happy. Because consumer expectation for percent of home price change in the next 12 months, if you were looking at it back in January, it was like 1.2%. Mm-hmm. April and May, it's at 42 and 4.1%. They're talking about home prices increasing. What this tells me, honestly, every time you have a huge change in a mm-hmm. marketplace, yeah. the, 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 the general public has to catch up to it, right? True. So now with these interest rates where they are and expectations for them to stay there for a little while, the market is coming back. Everybody's yeah. starting to get real again. I love that. Yeah. So let's talk about housing here in Southwest Florida because this is where we are and this is where we love. Right. So this is between the blue is Collier County and the green is Lee County. Mm-hmm. And you can see... Just like across the nation, you know, this was June number of homes sold by price in June of 2023. That 250 to 500 in Lee County is in that sweet spot. Mm-hmm. Now, we look at Collier County, and it's pretty on par with the 500 to 750, a little bit more than the 750 to a million, but look at the million plus. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a, a, a great comparison of two very different markets. Mm-hmm. I, I think... Um, you know, for those people that have that affordability of five five 500,000, they are going to leave more yeah. opportunity there. There's more opportunity. That's all there is. More opportunity, bigger yeah. house, nicer, newer, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. yeah, for sure. But now if I look at the luxury market and homes, that number of homes that sold by price in June of 2023, over a million dollars. And I look at those buckets, million to two, two to three, three to four, four to five and five plus. That one to two million is by far the biggest number in the million plus than as we go out. And, you know, I think that's rather interesting from a standpoint because we are seeing a lot of second home in that million dollar range. I want waterfront. I want other things that are just going to be priced higher. Yeah. And I think this is like, this is my business uh, on a slide. You know, we do have a lot of that one to three million stuff and there's still the higher end stuff that's moving as well. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now, um, if we look at the three-year mm-hmm. prices, so we go back to 2020, and people tell me all the time, you know, again, this goes back to, I think there's going to be a crash. So this is in our market between Collier County, which is the top line, and Lee County. You can see that they are trending up. We might see month to month because of a median where there's a either really high figure or a really low figure that brings it that number down but they're all trending up and they got pretty stable in in Lee County from probably um, middle of 2022 to now. Yeah, and until something major happens and, our, and, and we catch up to the inventory, this is gonna continue to do the same exact thing. There is no reason why it will not. Right. Yeah. So, you know, as we complete on this, what are our mid-year takeaways? Good news, buyers are active as housing is normalized. Prices are rebounding. Awesome. Reality check, affordability remains a challenge and homeowners still have limited options. Um, Our outlook, new construction is growing, offering more options for the buyers and the sellers. Um, With rebounding prices, homeowners ready to move are in a solid position now. I love that. So, you know, our last slide that we always have, is it time to move? 
it's always a good investment to move. <laughs> it's a great investment to move if you have the need to move. You you've got a baby or you your kids graduated or you know you've got you got married or you're getting unmarried so to speak. Whatever those life circumstances are that make it time for you to move, don't let this market freak you out because there's always an option. There's always something that you can go to up or down, whichever way you need to, or back north. Some of my super seniors need to get back home, closer to family. It's not a bad time. You and I may be biased, but I still think the best investment that you can do right now is still real estate. Me too. I do. So until next time, I'm Mary Bartis with the Bartos Group of Premier Plus and Randy Williams, TBF Mortgage. Can't wait to see you next time.